So Dan, what's the point of a hybrid heat pump? So, yeah, it's a really good question. Question I get asked quite a lot. The house behind us is kind of the answer. Yeah. So a lot of houses in the UK, heat pump is, you know, a full heat pump system is very suitable. It's quite an easy transition. However, there's a lot of housing stock, um, solid brick, single glazing, that would be, you know, we agree, we could get a heat pump in here. Yes. The financial cost of doing so for the customer is gonna be massive. So hybrid at the minute, a much cheaper option, allows them to significantly cut their carbon. So I mean, this property behind me, I'd look at roughly 40 to 50% of the year, heat pump only running the property. So on this job, we've got a combi boiler. Mm -hmm. So it's just like a, a standard combi boiler with a little tweak with circuit board mm -hmm. and then a heat pump on top of that. So That's how it. does that work and how do they work together? Yeah, so it's quite, yeah, you've literally, you've got it on the head there. So it is just a standard heat pump and a combi boiler put together. But what we've done is we've embraced the controller in the middle and what that will do is work out when it's cheapest to use each product. And it does that specifically by the customer's energy prices. So at the end of this install, the lads are going to type in how much the customer pays for their gas, how much they pay for their electricity. And then the system uses weather compensation. So it's going to look at the outdoor temperature, it's going to look at the required flow temperature that it needs, and it will always use the cheapest product based on that and then condition. So we've got the unit here. So this is the hybrid heat pump. So can you tell us just a little bit about sizing? What, mm. How big is it? How many kilowatts? So it says four kilowatt unit. Yeah. But it's a really small capacity unit. And, and how many kilowatts does it actually draw from the grid? Yeah, so... It gives, gives four out. That's it. So average running, it's somewhere between the region of 1,000 and 1,500 watts. So one to 1.5 kilowatts. It has the potential to draw 2.3 kilowatts and that's roughly 10.3 amps. So this could in fairly work off a flipping plug. We wouldn't advise, we wouldn't advise <laughs> it. We wouldn't advise it, but theoretically, yeah, it would yeah, run on a, a, on a 13 amp fuse. So with the gas to pipe work, we've just got two valves here on the back, mm -hmm. and they just pipe straight into the turn into boiler. That's it. So if you've done it a little bit differently, rather than selling extra flexes and stuff like that, it's, it's all palletized, it all comes on the kit, um, and we supply the correct valves and flexi connections to go with it. So does that come with all controls, all of that? It's just Controller. one package. Uh, anti-freeze valves, we provide a freeze valve and we actually have a location to fit it inside the unit so it definitely gets fitted in the correct place as well. Right, okay. And what about clearances and things? Obviously we're on the roof here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about clearances? How far does it need to be from boundaries yeah, and yeah. windows? And You're testing me now. So operational clearances, what we ask for as a manufacturer, we ask for 250 mil behind, 350 mil in front, I think it's 200 mil each side. But it refers to many types of instructions. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> But there is a thing called permitted development when you install heat pumps. Yeah. And that's basically looking at the impact, the noise impact this unit's going to have on a neighbouring property. And these are not these are not noisy at all. It's real quiet this unit. So roughly, if you work out permitted development, we're looking for three metres from the edge of this unit to the nearest neighbouring habitable window. So I've got a heat pump at my house, mm -hmm. which is a lot bigger than this. Yeah. And I can hardly hear mine. Yeah. I have to look I have to look in it, see if it's spinning. And this is just a baby in it compared yeah, to that. Yeah. So this is what what is the what's the decimal? Well, sound out that's 37 decibels. So that's like so, just like a boiler then, isn't it? Yeah, and to be honest, we haven't done anything amazing. It's just sheerly the size of the unit, because it's such a small unit, fan smaller, the compressor is smaller, it just generally doesn't make as much noise. Good stuff. Is there anything else that you can tell us that's really um, interesting about I mean, the heat yeah. pump? So, sort of key features really are, it can run on pretty much an existing heating system. So we don't have, to, with a full heat pump, we're generally looking at repiping a house, upgrading the radiators two or three times the size in some cases, um, and doing quite a bit of insulation works to the properties as well. So this will sort of work for a customer. If you just re it really you want to, you do want to do your bit, but you don't want any upheaval in your property, then you could just put a, a, a combi boiler back in, an alpha combi boiler, and then you could put a hybrid heat pump in as well, which makes it, it's a lot easier install. That's it, yeah. There's no disruption to house or a lot less disruption to house. And how does it connect together? So the pipe work side of it, mm -hmm. I know we looked at this before down there, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, but if we could explain again just for <coughs> this video. Yeah, so essentially the, the heat pump sits on the return to the boiler. So if the boiler is not required, the heat pump just flows through the boiler and completes the radiator circuit. Um, and then it has the ability to even preheat the boiler as well. So it can use the heat pump at high efficiency. 
if it hasn't got enough guts in the real winter time, it can bring the boiler on as backup as well. So it's really easy to pipe in, essentially just breaking the return pipe work, fitting the heat pump on that return pipe work. So fuel price security is the biggest thing that we found with customers now. Yeah. So like this customer, for example, if anything, you know, kicks off around the globe and it causes an effect to energy prices, you know, you could see gas prices surge or electricity prices become really cheap because there's abundance of renewable energy. Then we simply just change our parameters and we just put new tariff in our controllers and the system adapts. So really interesting part of the product is you have it installed now and it will always give you the cheapest heating. Good stuff. So if you've got any questions on the hybrid heat pump, put some comments below. I'm sure that Dan will be watching this and hopefully he'll I'll come on it. and put yeah, some comments yeah, yeah. on it. He is really busy at the minute. He's going all over the <laughs> world talking about heat pumps. Are you? Where are you going next? Uh, I am, I'm in Belfast next week. So if right, okay. anyone's in Belfast and wants to talk about heat pumps, then come and find me. <laughs> yeah, so he's everywhere now. So yeah, put some comments below. <laughs> That's what we need to get through to Sadiq Khan because the, the key of this is that heat pump's no different to plugging in a hairdryer or a kettle. You know, it's not going to wipe out the electric grid, not like your Tesla. I ain't got a Tesla. Oh, yeah, you haven't, have you? Not like your electric Porsche that drains the grid every night. Shh, we can't <laughs> <that> video. <laughs>